Hey, what's up guys? So uh, this video is going to be a little bit different from my typical electronics how-to videos because I'm actually not talking about electronics, but I am talking about something I did work on recently. Uh, I wouldn't say I worked on, but you know, it's kind of interesting to me. I was in the bank the other day trying to find out what uh, interest rate and loan I would qualify for. And uh, the loan officer in there calculated, you know, my monthly rate, my monthly payment for a loan I wanted to take out. And I asked him, you know, where did you get that number from? How did you calculate that? You know, what formula did you use? How did you do it? And he goes, oh, you know, we just plug it into a calculator here and, and uh, you know, it spits out a number at us. So really he had no idea. So I went home and I tried to figure this out a little bit. And it's pretty simple. And if you, uh, I'll have a link in the description for the, for the Wikipedia page that shows you the formula, which is called an amortiz amortization loan, which is a compounded, it's like a compounded interest type loan where, you know, you take money out at day zero and then it earns interest, you know, and then you make a monthly payment that is the same every month and eventually the loan goes down to zero and I'll show you that in a second. But this is the formula. And Wikipedia kind of starts to derive it a little bit, but even there, it's a little confusing. So, And before I saw it on Wikipedia, actually, I was just Googling around loan formulas and found this one. But I'm going to go through exactly how you get this formula. So there's a couple of variables in here, and this, this formula is used to calculate A, which is your monthly payment, how much money you're going to pay every month to pay this loan off while it is earning interest, okay? P is the principal loan amount. So that's how much money you borrowed from the bank, day zero, um, or day one, whatever you want to say. I is the monthly interest. Now, you hear a lot of terms like APR a lot, which is your annual percentage rate. And, and that's, your, that's your interest that you're paying uh, on the loan. But the interest, the APR is the year, you know, the, your annual percentage interest rate. So what you do here in this formula is divide that percentage by 12. Okay, so if it was 12%, you would divide it by 12, and that would give you 1%. Here, it's a 0.01 you'd put in for this formula. Um, N is your number of months. So if you did like a, you know, a two-year a two-year loan, this would be 12 times two, 24 months, and you should pay this entire thing off. And let me just show you real quick how how these loans work because you know it can it's very simple. But for some reason, there's a lot of confusion out there, even with the bankers, which kind of surprises me. So here's P, and here's time. Now, of course, this isn't going to be to scale at all, you know, and I don't even have any notes here. I'm just kind of doing this, you know, as I go. So it's going to be a little rough, this, this video, but I don't care. So you have some P. This is the money you got day one, and you went into the bank, you got it. It hasn't earned any interest yet. Um... So the money goes and it earns interest. It goes up. Then at the end of month one, you make a payment. And the amount of money you got you le left to pay off goes down a, a little bit by your A, whatever you paid off. Okay. And then month two, it continues to go up at that thing. You know, I shouldn't go. It doesn't go all the way back up to P, obviously. Okay. And then it comes back down. Yeah, this isn't going to be the scale at all. But see, what's happening here is eventually, by your last payment, this comes all the way down to zero, like that. And this is, let's call it N. You know, that's your no, your last N is your last month you, pay, you made a payment. So what that formula does is it calculates your A, which at which this could bring this all the way down to zero by the end of month N, okay? As long as the principal amount is earning interest at I for each month, right? So that's kind of cool, right? Well, I mean, just if you look at this graph, you can start to do the math on it, which I'm going to do here. But before I do that, I just want to define one quick thing is, you know, we talked about I, but let's just talk about like basic interest calculations. So like, let's say you buy something at X, and it's like, we're going to do a little sales tax thing. So let's say you, you pay for sales tax of, tax of I. So what you do is you take the percentage of X, and then you add it to X, right? So it's your, 
Sorry, I'm drawing on a slant here. So it's your it's your interest, you know, it's the the percentage of the item plus the the uh the item cost. So that now you have the cost plus the sales tax added on. Because what I want to do right off the bat is define this term so that we don't have to keep doing it because we just want to know what we can do. Because if you look here, we'll call this total here. Because if you look here, you can pull X out, which is the cost, and leave I plus 1. So you can multiply anything 1 plus I to get the total of it, the interest plus the cost total. Okay? So if you, so what you have here, um, like if, you, if your sales tax, let's just say it was 10%, this would be 1 plus point, 1 plus, ah, one t it would be your cost times 1.1, sorry, because 10% is 0.10, oh, right? Move the decimal over to the left two times. Plus 1 gives you 1.1. So you multiply anything by 1.1, and that's 10% plus the item. Because what I want to do right off the bat is define R is equal to 1 plus I. Okay? Because we're going to multiply things by R to give us the interest plus the I, you know, the, the actual value. Okay, so let's just go right through this. P at zero. This is time zero in the bank is P. Like, so day zero, we borrow money from the bank, and it's equal to our principal amount, the full amount. Okay? P1. This is end of month one. This is equal to P of zero times R. Right? It just earns some interest. But we're going to make a payment. Minus A. Okay? Simple as that. That's Now that's what's left over. That's what I still owe the bank is a P of 1. P of 2. Second month. It's equal to P of 1 times R minus A. Piece of cake, right? Whatever was here, you know, it's still sitting there. That's the amount that went up to, to month 2. Now we multiply that by R, make up another payment on it. But remember, inside of P1 is this whole thing, and then inside of P0 is this. So let's just do that real quick and take a peek at what P2 really is equal to. So I'm going to take P of 1 here, which is equal to P R minus A brackets, because that's this whole thing, times R minus A. Now, I mean, if I went all the way out to month 30, man, this thing would get pretty intense, wouldn't it? You know, we'd have a big freaking giant thing. But let's just simplify this a little bit so we can look at it a little closer. We have PR squared minus AR minus A. Hey, look at that. It's kind of interesting. At month two, our leading term is PR squared, so that could be like... Whatever month you're on, your leading term times P is equal to 2 minus AR1 minus A, maybe AR0. You know, anything to the 0 is equal to a 1. So it looks like it kind of gradually goes down to 0 with the R term. Kind of neat, huh? Let's look at that a little bit closer and try to put like a general formula on this whole thing. Okay, so what we have here at any month. P of N, we have, now this is where things get a little tricky, P times R to the N, right? Because we were on month two and we had, we had, we were on month two and we had R times two, or R squared, sorry, minus now A, but let's pull all the R, let's, we're going to pull all the A's out of all the R terms and just leave A there by itself. Now A was multiplied by a summation well, wow, that's a bad summation sign, isn't it? Okay, whatever, who cares? To the R, where, let's say R is to the K for now, R to the K, where K is going from zero, because remember this term here, the last one here was R to the zero, because it was just a one. So we're just gonna say that, just to make things easy on ourselves. K to the zero, to K to what? Now A was only attached to the next one down, one. So that was this month minus 1. So, ah, what did I put that there? So this is going to be n minus 1. So that's exactly what we had here. And this just keeps going. If we kept going all the way down, 
this would follow this formula here. But you know, this summation is kind of hard to deal with. I mean, how do you turn this into any kind of problem? You know, we're not ever gonna, you know, like if we just want to look here and see what this summation is equal to, k to the equal to zero to n minus one to the r to the k. I mean, if we sat here and did this, it goes one, right? Because k r to the zero is equal to one plus r plus r squared plus r3 all the way to r to n minus 1. So it goes all the way out. And let's call this, by the way, rt, total, man. That's what we want to put up here, rt. We want this whole stupid thing to get out of our lives. We want to call it rt. This is called a geometric summation. So we need to figure out how to solve this and turn it into some kind of formula. So what we could do, though, is let's make another formula here. And this is kind of how they solve these. And this is, this is what I spent my drive back from Virginia here to Ohio doing in the car when I was trying to figure this out. Let's go RT times an R. What would that be equal to? Let's multiply everything in here by an R. Let's go R plus R squared plus R3. Hey, there's a lot of same terms in here. All the way... 2, now r, let's say this was r n minus 1. If we were at month 30, this would be r to the 29. Let's go r to the 29 times an r. It gives me r 30, which is n. So this will actually go all the way up to r n. Now, you know, we basically just added another r to this, so it doesn't have to go n minus 1. But you're probably still wondering, well, what's going on here? What's the point of doing this? Well, now, since there's so many similar terms between them, we can go r this whole stupid thing times r minus this and get rid of a lot of these terms. So what we're going to do now is go, and this is, this is what we're doing here, is rt times r minus, minus rt. Okay? That's what I want to do. I want to take this minus this. And, you know, you're probably like, oh, man, i got to go e every single term. No, just think about it. We, we're going to have an r. There's an r. There's an r squared. There's an r3. So, boom, cancel all this stuff out. You can go all the way up. Now, there is going to be an r29 here, which is rn minus 1, since this was like an r29 if, this, you know, if n was 30. So that goes away, too. But we are left with r to the n, and we're left with 1. So what happens is, is it goes r to the n minus 1. Pretty easy, right? We need to solve for rt. So what we do here is see rtr minus rt. Let's pull the rt out quickly. That's equal to what? r minus 1 is equal to this thing up here, which was r to the n minus 1. Divide both sides by r minus 1. And RT is equal to R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. Okay? So it's pretty easy, right? Yeah, it is, man. We're getting somewhere now. Because now what we can do is take this guy here, which is a nice, easy-to-work-with formula, and put it up for this. So let's rewrite that. So we have P to the n is equal to p times r to the n minus a times this whole thing, which is r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. Okay? Now, remember earlier when we did this little substitution, we said r is equal to 1 plus i? Well, let's do that now just to get, you know, just to get everybody back, back to normal. You know, because I think we're almost there. P1 plus I to the N minus A. 1 plus I to the N minus 1. 1 plus I minus 1. See that? We're getting there. That's the formula. Now, P to the N. Really what we want to do, though, is solve for this thing when the when we what we want to find an a value that brings our whatever we were left with down to zero right we don't care about 
this will find you whatever you're, whatever's left at any point in time for N and I and everything. But we really want to just bring this down to zero. So you could really just say that we want to solve for this thing when this is equal to zero. And we want to solve for A, remember? So let's do that. Let's bring the P, this whole big chunk thing, over here, minus P, 1 plus I to the N is equal to minus A, uh, and this whole big thing here, N minus 1, 1 plus I minus 1. You know, I'm just seeing some things here, 1 here, minus 1. I could actually get rid of that real quick. So there's just, there's just an I down there. Yeah, I know my algebra's bad. Get, let's get rid of those negatives. There's a negative on both sides. Get rid of that. We want to solve for the A, which is right here, so we can divide both sides by bit this big guy. I'm going to put the A over here. A is equal to, let's see, P1 plus I to the N. And now we got to divide this thing. Remember, the I is the only thing left, so we got to have the I up, up, up there now. And then 1 plus I to the N minus 1, because, you know, we flipped the, the thing. Okay, I think we're there, aren't we? Where was that formula I had from Wikipedia? Yeah, I think we're done, man. So we got A is equal to P. P, so they pulled the P down here, I, we have the I up there, 1 plus I to the N, 1 plus I to the N minus 1. Pretty cool stuff, huh? So that's how it works, really. We just solved for, derived that entire formula, solved the geometric series, and went through the entire thing. It was pretty easy, I think. Um, now you could you could figure it out, you know, if like you wanted to take a loan out for two years, you know, you have 24 months there, so you put 24 in for the N, and let's say it's, you know, 12% 12 loan, divide your 12 by 12, and that gives you 1%, so put your .01 in here for your I, uh, you're going to take, you know, let's say you're going to buy a new motorcycle for 20 grand, put your 20,000 in for P, and then that's how much money you got it. You're, you're going to have to pay on it every month. And yeah, there's going to be the taxes and you know other things added on. But this is the formula those bankers use. So uh, you know, I don't know if you made it this far, but if you did, thanks for watching, and I hope that helps.